What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily, and in this video, we are checking out the new Techno Pova 6 Pro 5G. Now, this phone was just announced at MWC in Barcelona last week. And if you're unfamiliar with Techno, they make some really interesting budget-friendly and gaming-focused smartphones for everywhere else besides the US. But Techno was kind enough to send me the new Pova 6 Pro so I could see what all the hype is about and also tell you guys all about it. The Pova 6 Pro is actually both a budget-friendly and gaming-focused smartphone that physically is one of the most unique and eye-catching devices I've ever seen. Feature-wise, has a lot of great stuff to offer, including some very solid specs, all while coming in at a price that's well under $300. There's really a ton to talk about with the new Pova 6 Pro, and I'm gonna fill you in on everything you need to know, including where this phone is going to launch in the coming weeks. But first things first, let's actually unbox it because I do wanna emphasize how much value you get just with all the accessories Techno still includes here. So slicing through the sticker and sliding off the lid, the first thing you get is the phone itself. And if you're curious about the specs, well, there's just about everything. Feel free to pause the video and read along if you want. Between what's shown here and what's plastered all around the box, you pretty much know exactly the phone you're buying, and I can appreciate the transparency at least. You'll also stumble upon a stack of paperwork, which includes an extra month's warranty for the phone, instructions, and legal info. Underneath that stuff is the first actual accessory, which is a pretty nice color-matched clear case for the phone, which I'll pop on in just a minute. You also get a super fast 70 watt USB-A charging brick, something most other phone companies no longer include with any of their devices. And we're still not done. You also get a USB-A to USB-C cable to pair with the charging brick and 3.5 millimeter wired headphones, which is something I haven't seen tossed in in a really, really long time. And finally, there's a tiny little SIM ejector tool attached to the cardboard divider there. So pretty much every accessory and add-on you could ever want with a new smartphone purchase, and shout out to Techno for including all these goodies in the box. With all that stuff out of the way, here is the new Techno Pova 6 Pro once again. And one minor gripe, the manufacturer sticker on the back leaves a bit of a residue, which is annoying, but a minute of wiping fortunately clears that away. And it's a good thing too, because this is no doubt one of the most most striking and unique looking smartphones I've been fortunate enough to try. Now, as far as specific pricing and availability information, the Techno Pova 6 Pro retails for between $229 and $269, depending on the configuration and where in the world you're located. It's officially launched right now in the Philippines, Saudi Arabia, and India, and it'll be coming to other parts of Asia, the Middle East, and to Latin America in the coming weeks. And if you want to learn more about this phone or find retailers in your area, Area that'll be selling it, check out a couple of the links I'll have down in the video description below. So if it wasn't already obvious, the Pova 6 Pro is a big phone, precisely 6.78 inches corner to corner, with a decent screen to body ratio of about 87%. You get very minimal black borders framing the display, a center hole punch selfie camera up top, and comparing this to any $300 Samsung or Motorola device, for example, this just looks way more modern. It is big though, it's very tall, so it's the sort of phone that requires a shift and stretch to reach the top edge and corners with your thumb, but if you like big phones and big screens, you'll definitely like this. Also, the phone ships with a screen protector pre-installed, so add that to the list of accessories if you want. Around back, this phone has just a wild design. Mine obviously is in Comet Green, but it also comes in a slightly more subtle meteorite gray option. Now, the housing and build is all plastic, but there's this chrome circuit board looking design with gold accents and some additional spec information printed around various bits of the back cover. It's almost like a see-through sort of design with a clear plastic cover. And you might have also noticed some blinking LEDs up towards the top. There's an LED ring around one of the cameras and a couple lines of LEDs shooting off in different directions. I set the LED lights to party mode, so they blink non-stop throughout the video, but they also serve as notification lights and there's tech technically nine different lighting modes with 101 user-defined options and effects in settings. One other thing to note, the phone is IP53 dust and splash resistant, so don't take it swimming this summer, but a splash from the sink, for
for example, shouldn't kill it. Taking a look around at everything else, on the left side, you've got a dual SIM and SD card tray that supports two SIMs on one side and then the micro SD card on the other. Now, the phone ships with 256 gigabytes of onboard storage, which is a ton of space already, but it's nice to know at least you have the option of doubling or tripling the storage potential for cheap. On the right side, familiar volume and power buttons. Up top, you'll see one of two external speakers alongside an IR blaster, which you might have noticed referenced on the box as well. On the bottom, the headphone jack, of course, alongside the USB-C port for charging and the other main speaker there. Your selfie camera and earpiece on the front and around back, the triple lens camera setup you guys saw already with those LED lights. Now, one thing that I never see on these budget phones, at least not like $250 devices like this one, is an in-display fingerprint sensor for unlocking. But this phone has that and actually it's pretty good. I found it to be more accurate and a bit faster than previous budget in-display sensors from like the older Samsung A51s, for example. And I think this is a nice premium sort of add-on that pairs well with the face unlock, which I also found works perfectly fine. And if you're curious about the case that comes with this phone, well, it's a pretty good one. It's not the cheap, flimsy, clear cases from some other phones. This is quite firm with thick color matched rubbery edges and a crystal clear back to show off the funky design of the phone. And all the important bits are even protected. There's a raised edge for the camera. The screen has a full edge as well, all the way around. The buttons are nicely covered. So yeah, a darn nice case for sure that Techno tosses in here and something I definitely appreciate. So one of the standout features for the POVA 6 Pro, I'd say, is the display. And not just because it's gigantic, but because of the viewing experience it delivers. The nearly 6.8 inch screen is an AMOLED panel full HD 2436 by 1080 resolution, packing in about 393 pixels per inch. It's a 120 hertz refresh rate display, and it has a higher than average 1300 nits of peak brightness. This all goes beyond the trifecta of screen features that I like to see in smartphones. OLED, 1080p, high refresh rate, and it actually competes with some phones that hit a four-figure price tag. A phone this big has to at least be 1080 resolution, so I'm glad to see that with this phone, and you don't have to worry about seeing any pixelation up close. This is a perfectly sharp-looking display. It's also vibrant and incredibly bright for the price. That's something I noticed almost immediately as I started using it, and the bright Brightness and lack of distracting glare, especially, is something you just never see on budget devices. This is a colorful, punchy looking screen for all sorts of content, and cranking up that brightness gives you just such a nice setup. And on top of all that, the cherry on top is the 120Hz refresh rate. Now, you can also bump that down to 90Hz if you want to potentially save battery life or get a slight performance boost. And it has a dynamic auto switching refresh rate option as well, but I say keep it at 120Hz and enjoy that silky smooth and ultra responsive feel of the 120 hertz screen. That's a flagship feature you're getting for basically a fourth the price. Paired with that picture perfect display is a set of speakers that also go beyond what you'd normally see. Dual speaker setup on this phone doesn't just use the earpiece as the secondary sound, but it has the dedicated second physical speaker up at the top to deliver a much better, more rounded, and even stereo listening experience. And here's a quick sound sample so you can hear that for yourself. Of course, you don't even have to use the speakers. That headphone jack is still there, and you do get those earbuds you saw in the box. They're, well, quite cheap, but they have a mic and volume button, and hey, they're still included, which is sort of nice. Inside, the POVA 6 Pro is powered by the MediaTek Dimensity 6080, a pretty decent mid-range chipset that launched less than a year ago and that I think is a solid choice for a phone like this. That's paired to either 8 or 12 gigabytes of physical internal RAM, and you also have the option of utilizing up to another 12 gigs of virtual RAM via the internal storage hardware thanks to MemFusion. Now, if those specs seem like overkill, well, there's a good reason for that. Here are the Geekbench scores, so you have some performance numbers to compare, but all that RAM and power is really intended to be used for gaming. 
This isn't specifically or solely a gaming phone necessarily, but between the RAM Boost and GameSpace app, which holds a myriad of gaming-focused performance settings and user options to optimize power, performance, and more, gaming is certainly one of this phone's specialties. With that being said, an argument could be made that the processor holds this phone back a little when you compare all the other specs it has, but even for the more graphics-heavy games like PUBG or Genshin Impact, this phone is going to be just fine. But I'll be sure to push it hard for my full review, and I might even do a dedicated gaming test video so you can see it in action if you guys are interested in seeing that. Something else that's interesting, with the software, you get Android 14 with Techno's HiOS skin on top, and it's a relatively friendly and well-optimized custom Android experience, albeit with a lot of pre-installed apps and other bloatware that I wish were maybe left off. I think this borders on the sort of streamlined Android experience and less than Google setup that a lot of people prefer, though I hope Techno can stay on top of future software updates, but I suppose we'll have to wait and see since there's no guarantees really. Altogether though, the specs, software, gaming focused add-ons, and overall user experience to me don't suggest this phone is a budget device at all. And while maybe the screen is a better value proposition in this case, I do think the specs and performance capabilities here also make this phone well worth the money. The other thing I'd say this phone does way better than most is stay juiced up. That's thanks in part to its 6,000 milliamp battery, which is probably a thousand to 1500 milliamps more than whatever smartphone you currently have. So that's already a big plus. I mentioned earlier that this phone supports 70 watt wired charging speeds, which equates to a zero to 50% charge time in about 20 minutes and a full charge in under an hour. On top of that, this phone does support wireless charging and reverse wireless charging at 10 watts, another feature you just never see on budget phones from big name brands. So tack on another point for the POVA 6 Pro, to me, these battery and charging features are incredibly useful and they're near the top of its selling points, something I know a lot of people will appreciate. Last but not least, we have to talk about those big cameras around back. The POVA 6 Pro has a triple lens camera setup that consists of a 108 megapixel main lens, a 2 megapixel secondary lens, and a 0.08 megapixel auxiliary lens. That's a unique hardware setup for sure, and up front you get a pretty decent 32 megapixel selfie camera. Now inside the camera app, Techno offers just a ton of shooting modes and camera features that once again you'd almost never see on other $250 or $300 smartphones, including dual video recording, which utilizes the rear and selfie cameras, 2K video quality and 1080 60fps shooting, very robust manual controls including aperture adjustments and filters, there's document scanning, low light super night mode, and a whole lot more. And to me, while these aren't quite flagship caliper camera settings, there's certainly enough here to outshoot most anything else in that probably even sub $500 category. Snapping a quick couple of sample pictures here, you can see that this phone certainly does not look budget, and in fact, these pictures look pretty good. They're a bit smooth, even though there's no beauty filter here, but the color and exposure look great, and the rear lens for sure captures a lot more detail than the selfie camera does. I'd be super happy with a camera setup like this for this price point, and I know a lot of other people probably would be too. For me, the new Technopova 6 Pro is Unfortunately, a really great phone that just won't grace US soil. For the rest of the world, this is a solid sub $300 smartphone with an incredible display, decent specs, crazy battery and charging features, and enough gaming and camera add-ons to make it feel like you almost got a flagship device. And it's a shame we here in the US don't end up getting phones like this because I think they'd give our usual options, Samsung, Motorola, OnePlus, sort of, a run for their money. But what do you guys think about the new Techno Pova 6 Pro? Is it a phone you'd consider right now? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts, of course, especially if you have the phone yourself already. But hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. Be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys later.